The sacrifice of the mother is exemplified profoundly by Michelangelo's great sculpture, the Paeta. Mary is contemplating her son crucified and ruined, so that's his body after he's been crucified. It's her fault. It was through her he entered the great drama of being. So what's the meaning of this sculpture? It's a great sculpture. It's just an absolutely unbelievable sculpture. You just can't believe that someone could exist who could make something like And of course, it wasn't the only thing Michelangelo made, right? It wasn't like, that's it. It was something he just tossed off in a couple of months while he was doing other unbelievable things. But, you know, it's, it's, an, it's an object of contemplation, which is why it's in a great cathedral in a great city. It's an object of contemplation. And the idea is something like, well, what, what's the role of a mother if she's awake? I, I had a client come see me a while back, not very long ago. A woman in about, who's about 30 and trying to make decisions about her life. And she was pretty career-oriented, and so I asked her about Although, maybe having a bit of trouble with her career. I've seen this many, many times. So this is an amalgam. This is a story that's an amalgam. And I talked to her about the other elements of her life. It's like, well, you know, there's only five things you do in life, so you've got your career down. You know, what do you do outside of your career that's meaningful and engaging? How are things going with your family? It could be your family of origin, your siblings, whatever. Do you have an intimate relationship? And like, what's your plan for your own family? And apart from those five things, there's sort of something like, get some exercise now and then, don't eat too badly, and try to stay away from the drugs, you know? That, that, that kind of, and the crime, that kind of lays out <laughs> life, and if you miss any of those five things, or if you do any of those other things wrong, then you're in trouble, and you can get away with missing a couple of them, but not all of them. You know, and she said something along the lines of, well, I'm not sure I should bring a child into this world. And I thought, oh, God, Christ, you've got to come up with something better than that. Such a bloody cliche, which is what I told her. I said, you know, you must have thought that up when you were 16. It's like, really? That's your, you can't do any better. This was a very, very smart woman. It's like, really, you're, you can't do any better than that? It's like, yes, obviously, this is a veil of tears and, a, you know, a well of suffering and all of that. You know, if, if you ask 30 people who are, wondering about having children, why they're wondering, 20 of them will say that, and so that, that tells you how original it is. It's not original at all. It's not a thought. It's like this little, it's like a, it's like a, it's a meme. It's something that lives in your mind. It's not a thought, and it's certainly not something. It's certainly not something that you should just take at face value and then say, oh, well, I'm not having a family then. It's like, no, no. You kind of look at that, and you criticize it a little bit. It's like, well, the pop, the it's the other one. That's the other one that's very common. There's too many people on the planet already. It's like, <laughs> I really don't like that statement. It's like, just who are you going to ask to leave? Just how are you going to get them to leave? You know, it's a serious question. And who says there's too many people? What the hell's wrong with people anyways? <laughs> sort of, or running around ruining the planet. Yeah. It's like, I think it was the Club of Rome who prophesied, by the way, that there would be so many people on the planet by the year 2000 that there would be widespread starvation. And they were completely and utterly wrong about that. And I think it was the Club of Rome who either compared us to a virus or a cancer on the face of the planet. It's like, oh, really? That's what you think about people, eh? Hmm, aren't you something? Isn't that something to think about human beings? Viruses and cancer. What do you do with viruses and cancer? Invite them in and make them at home. It's like, no, you try to eradicate them. You've got to bloody well watch your metaphors, folks, because it isn't clear that you come up with them or that they run you. So you better watch them. So anyways, Mary, you know, and Mary's the great mother, right? That she's the mother. That's what Mary is. Whether she existed or not is not the point. She exists at least as a hyper-reality. She exists as the mother. Well, what's the sacrifice of the mother? Well, that's easy. If you're a mother and you... If you're a mother who's worth her salt, you offer your son to be destroyed by the world. That's what you do. I mean, that's what's going to happen, right? He's going to be born. He's going to suffer. He's going to have his trouble in life. He's going to have his illnesses. He's going to face his failures and catastrophes, and he's going to die. That's what's going to happen. And if you're awake, you know that, and then you say, well, perhaps he will live in a way that will justify that. And then you try to have that happen. And that's what makes you worthy of a statue like that. 
but still the sacrifice of the mother. Is it right to bring a baby into this terrible world? Well, every woman asks herself that question. Some say no, and they have the reasons. Mary answers yes, voluntarily. Mary is the archetype of the woman who answers yes to life voluntarily. That's what that image means. And not because she's blind. She knows what's going to happen. And so she's the archetypal representation of the woman who says yes to life, knowing full well what, what life is. Not naive, not someone who got pregnant in the back seat of a 1957 Chevy, you know, in one, in a one night of, 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 of half-drunk idiocy. Not that, but consciously, consciously, knowing what's to come. And then also allows it to happen, because that's another thing that's a testament to the courage of mothers. And my mother was good at this. My mother's a very agreeable person. Too agreeable for her own good. But that's what happens if you're agreeable because you're too agreeable for your own good. That's the definition of agreeable. And so she's a nice person and still is. Luckily, she's still alive and we've had a very good relationship and I have always been able to make her laugh, which is, which is a good thing. And, but she was tough cookie, that woman, you know. If... if uh, Remember once she came across, I was out playing in this baseball diamond, little diamond in empty lot really in this little town I grew up in and I was about 10 and she walked by, I was there with a bunch of my friends and I was about to have a fist fight with this little tough kid that I hung around with and uh, there were half girls on the team and the fist fight had some relationship to status maneuvering, you know, in relationship to that. Anyways, we were going to have a fight, and my mom walked by, she took a look, and I could see from her demeanor that she knew exactly what was about to happen, and she looked for a second, and then she walked by, and I thought, whoa, good work, mom. No kidding, eh? It's like, last bloody thing I needed at that moment was for her to come charging up and say, you boys aren't planning to have a fight, are you? It's like, well, yeah, Mom, we're, we were actually planning to have a fight, and now that you came and intervened, I actually lost before the goddamn thing even started. <laughs> so, two thumbs up for Mom. She was also the person that said, because I had some trouble with my dad when I was, a key, you know, an adolescent. He had some trouble with me, so, you know, with a <laughs> It was 50-50, that's for now, it's probably 70-30 with me on the 70 end of the being the trouble. And anyways, I left home when I was about 17, and uh, she said something really interesting when I left home. She said, if it was too good at home, you'd never leave. I thought, hey, Mom, that's pretty good, you know, for, for an agreeable person, you've got a real spine, man. So that was pretty good. So... So, you know, mother, this is this, the mother is the person who also says, get out there, take your goddamn lumps, because you're tough enough so that you can handle it. She doesn't say, you just stay down there in your bedroom, brooding away, because the world is unfair and treating you badly, and your suffering is too much. She says, yeah, there's a lot of suffering out there, but you're a hell of a lot tougher than you think you are. So, 